We're very happy that Forrest Galante is joining Yay, us. Forrest, Wildlife welcome. expert, <laughs> real life superhero, <laughs> oh lover goodness. of animals. <laughs> so excited you're here. I'm definitely the third one. I'm definitely a lover of animals. I don't know oh, about good. superhero and expert, but uh, no, thank you guys. Thanks for having me. This is lots of fun. Well, the fact that you swim with sharks, that puts you at superhero exactly. level for me. There you go. Uh, couldn't do it. I mean... I mean, it depends on the shark, but what you were doing with the looking for the Pondicherry shark, I was like, no, I'm not. Uh, well, you could do, do it because you have done it. If you swim in the ocean, you swim with sharks. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. See, that's here. <laughs> <laughs> very true. And kind of what you were talking about yes. when you're like, what are you afraid of? Like when I'm in the ocean, I'm like, I, there's sharks here. I know. There that. are. I know. There yeah. are. That's their domain. But that's yeah. what's so crazy. So before you came in, I was saying that I was so excited to talk to you because um, a lot of us grow up with these fears of certain animals, right? Sure. Like I grew up being scared of like sharks and snakes. Be thanks to Jaws and Anaconda and all yeah. these movies, right, that I'm sure are very accurate. Oh, uh, yeah. No, they're not. They're I, documentaries. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I did see your video uh, but that I believe was on GQ where you're breaking down yeah. animal scenes yeah. in all of these movies mm -hmm. like like uh, The Shallows and, and Jaws and Anaconda. Yep. And it was fascinating to hear you talk about little things like, you know, they make the snake itself look a little bit scarier or right. meaner with the eyes, but right. that's not what snake eyes look like. So do you think that fear of people or, or sorry our, our, our fear that we have of other animals is that because of movies is that because of media where do you think that comes from yeah I mean I think it's a combination of a number of things the first and foremost I think we fear what we don't understand yeah. as human beings I think that's human nature and and for most of us you know as we sit here in Burbank California um, we don't understand wildlife right. uh, you know we, we see it on TV or you know we see it from a vehicle or at a zoo or whatever it is but we don't understand it we don't interact with it we right. don't understand how complex and intelligent intelligent creatures are. Um, media, of course, contributes to that. Mm -hmm. You know, you see things like Jaws or Anaconda or whatever, and, you know, all the, the villain is the animal, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and you compound that with the fact that we're just removed from it all. It gives you, you're like, what do you see on TV? Well, you see Jaws, you know? Yeah. Do, I, do, I, do I ever see a white shark? You know, I do, but does the average person ever see a white shark? No. Mm -hmm. So all I know is what I've seen. I'm removed from it. I don't understand it. I don't interact with it. I'm scared of it, you know. So I think I think it's a combination of factors, and I think that, you know, I'm not trying to disparage media. I work in media. I love media. Right. But um, and, and it gets viewers. But I think people just need to understand, you know, a movie's a movie. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, just because Jaws is depicting this man-eating killer, mega great white shark, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a movie. It's entertainment. Okay. Well, I'm gonna work on that. But okay. uh, but but <laughs> watching your show Extinct or Alive on Animal Planet actually helps, right? Like like it's kind of like you're basically educating the public into how to talk to these or not how to t how to treat these animals, right? Well, and I feel like that's that's pretty that's very impressive because I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. We we definitely flip it on its head, you yeah. know. And what I mean by that is, uh, so the premise of my show, Extinct or Alive, yeah. is to travel the world looking for evidence that animals deemed extinct could actually still be out there. Yeah. Once a creature is written off as extinct, that's the end of it, right? Mm -hmm. And there's no funding for extinct creatures. Extinct means gone, wiped right. off the face of the earth. So my field of interest, my passion outside of all wildlife, one that I'm very focused on, is critically endangered species, species on the edge of extinction. So. Anyway, I only tell you all this because you're like, well, why would you be at re interacting with dangerous sharks and snakes? Along the journey, because we go to such remote, remote locations mm -hmm. and we, we do such lengthy expeditions, we encounter a lot of these kind of feared creatures that mm -hmm. we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that my show does or attempts to do and what I attempt to do as a mission statement is to educate people that these things are not scary. Mm -hmm. They are dangerous, but they just deserve to be respected rather than feared. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I'm walking through a forest in Vietnam and I have a big cobra by my feet, I pick it up and show that to the audience. I go, look, you know, this animal doesn't want to be here. You know, this is a big, beautiful cobra that my producer almost stepped on and died, <laughs> but it's because we're in his environment and right. he almost stepped on it. It's mm -hmm. not because the cobra came charging out of the bushes to attack us. That's just not how it works. And so we try and communicate that message regularly because it's a good message like people it's need to know this message. stuff you Absolutely. know like it's, it's animals are not just scary by being animals they're mm -hmm. scary because you know they have their backs against the wall or we're invading their space like that's just the same thing as if some guy comes into your house you know have right. you ever had a fear of animals like even when you were little before you learned all of this stuff well i grew up with it so it's hard for me to say you know I, i'm always learning i'm in a constant state of learning but but i'm not trying to be tough and say no i've never been scared of anything because quite <laughs> the opposite but it, there are situations every month, every week that I work where I'm scared, without yeah. any doubt. But, you know, it's 
being scared. I'm scared because I put myself into that situation. And I think, you know, the difference, <laughs> I'm not saying like I, I'm fearless or anything like that. I, I may be brave because I work through the fear, but it's not, it's not that I'm, un, I'm not scared. I just take calculated risks. Mm -hmm. And to answer your question, that was a long winded way, but to answer your question, was I ever scared of it? No, I've just always understood it and kind of pushed the limit a little bit. But right. I mean, you've been basically, you know, you've been bitten by a venomous snake. You've been uh, on, I think, on a plane crash. <laughs> two, two uh, plane crashes. Jesus, I mean, you, I think you've bit, been bitten by a shark as well. Like you've had all of these experiences. Whoa. Oh okay. my God, so, can we see that? Okay, not that. That's a burn from cooking crab two nights ago. So ignore, oh. ignore that. It's a little <laughs> one about it. Yeah. You see, and that was that just in your way, own home. Yeah. So. See. It yeah. Looks and more which bad one's more dangerous, like the crab pot or the shark? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but yeah, you've, you've had all these experiences with these creatures. I mean, number one, what's the scariest one? And number two, like it, that hasn't stopped you from continuing your job. No, definitely not. In fact, it inspires me. And, and I learn from each one, right? Each close call teaches me something. Sometimes, most of the time, it's my fault, right? Oh, okay, I pushed it too far. Here's what I did. Here's what I shouldn't have done. Um, and I won't make that mistake again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, animals are like people. Sometimes you get a grouchy one. Yeah. <laughs> They, they, Especially if you're in their environment. Yeah, right? they yeah. have their own temperaments, you know, and uh, every species is, everyone's different and everyone you learn to understand and respect and behave differently around. But to answer your question, what's the animal I'm the most scared of? Mm -hmm. Mosquitoes. Really? Oh, oh yeah. How come? Yeah, because uh, are there like different species of mosquitoes? Well, I'm, I'm sure there are, but that are like the most dangerous down to the, the common one that we might they're, have in our They're backyard. all the most dangerous. I mean, really? not all every species, but, you know, if I go on a three-month-long trek through the African bush, the thing that is the most likely to kill me is not a lion, it's mm -hmm. not a buffalo, it's not a snake, it's not an elephant, it's a mosquito that gives me malaria. Right. Right. So, okay. and what's the one thing that I cannot avoid? It's the mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I can see the lion and and approach and know how to do it. I, you know, I'm just that's it. That's all. <laughs> that's all I got for a mosquito. You know, right. a little slap on the neck or whatever. Oh. So. For me, the most dangerous stuff is the small stuff. Yeah, it usually okay. is, right? I feel yeah. like now there's going to be a lot of people staying up at night worrying about mosquitoes. Yes, yeah, yeah, everybody <laughs> is going audience. to die. Literally, yeah. everyone that's watching this, you're all going to die. We, no. we all are, though. Well, is, we talk true. about this all the that's time. That's true. We are. Go. No, but but look, and I mean, there's no malaria here, obviously, in right. the United States, and and you know, there's very easy ways to prevent malaria: cover up at night, take malarone, whatever. But um, the po the point is just that. It's not the big things that are scary. There's not even that many of the big things left in the world, you know, really and truly. Mm -hmm. It's the little things that can get you. It's the parasites. It's the mosquitoes. Yeah. It's dengue fever, malaria, things like that. That's the worst stuff. Right. And, I mean, so your, your show, Extinct or Alive Again, I mean, it's you're looking for these species that uh, were supposedly extinct, and yeah. you found a couple, which yeah. is incredible. <laughs> amazing. Thank I you. I mean, the, yeah. the, one of them is the Zanzibar leopard, yep. right? Yep. The other one is the uh, Fer Fernandina, I'm just going to read it in Spanish, mm -hmm. a tortoise. Yep. And uh, so when this happened, like the first time you basically saw the headline that said, you know, Animal Planets, Extinct or Alive, actually finds its first extinct, extinct species. Like, what did that feel like for you? Well, it's funny because by the time that I'd seen a headline, I was way on to the next thing already. Right. You know what I mean? But yeah. the, the feeling. So so the so we're up to about five animals mm -hmm. deemed extinct or, or believed not deemed necessarily, but believed extinct mm -hmm. that we've uncovered which is huge, wow. and I'm very proud of what myself and my team have accomplished right. in that realm. Um, very, very big for conservation. We've raised a lot of money for conservation and, and supported a lot of ongoing efforts, so I'm proud of that. That's um, great. As you should be. Yeah. But, but, you know, when, when, <laughs> when I first started telling people, like, I'm going to go look for extinct animals, right? I don't know if you guys are familiar with The Lost City of Z. It's the adventure yeah. of Percy Fawcett. Mm -hmm. they, they made a movie about it. You guys are movie yeah. buffs, yeah. right? Yeah. So you remember that scene? He's your movie bus, so I think you'll be able to relate to this. Remember that scene where he's standing up there and he's in front of the, he's in this hall, right? And there's all these like stuffy guys in smoking jackets going, "You're insane! You're never gonna find it!" Mm -hmm. Right? That's me when I started working. <laughs> you know, like I'm Percy Fawcett in that situation, talking to Animal Plant, talking to various conservation groups, going, "Hey, I'm looking for extinct animals. They're, You're insane! Like, get out of here!" <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, so to go from that to like, uh, you know. What was it? must have been late 2017 when we first got the footage of the Zanzibar leopard, the first right. animal right. Uh, presumed extinct that we uncovered. We, I was like, look, I'm starting to get goosebumps That's just thinking awesome. about it. Like, and, it, and that feeling never goes away. You know, it, it floored me. It absolutely floored me. Like, it, it made an entire life of work 
come to fruition in a single moment, in a single two or three second clip, whatever it was that we had that Zanzibar walk across the frame of that trail camera. It was like my entire life's work came to fruition in two seconds. I mean, your reaction in the video is beautiful. I mean, you're all freaking out, right? Because yeah. it's yeah. such an amazing thing. Yeah. And why do you think, you know, us as humans are just so freaked out by this? It's like we think that something that was created by nature or, or whatever, you know, your beliefs are. Right. Uh, and and, and to, to see that, hey, there's this thing that we didn't even know existed or we didn't even think existed <laughs> and we just found it right like that's that what's that's what do you think that's what keeps life magical do you think that's why we're so obsessed with these types of like nature documentary things well it's very romantic right you've got this um this concept of something coming back from the dead a lazarus you know as yeah. the bible puts it like it's very romantic and, and on top of that it's you know, it's arrogant for us as human beings to say definitively something's gone. It's a mm -hmm. big world. There's mm -hmm. a lot of places to hide, and animals are good at hiding for the most part. Um, and, and I'm not saying we should undersell extinction because we shouldn't. It's a very serious, severe thing that people should be aware of and not take lightly. But it's very arrogant to be like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a Western scientist, and I haven't seen this thing in 30 years <laughs> extinct. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like that's, that's a very, like human wanting to classify something like arrogant statement so i'm not saying that the people that do this are, are arrogant because they're not they're scientists just like myself mm -hmm. trying to do the best thing they can but you know to 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 throw that out the window and just say screw it like we're gonna go look for it and and then to find it mm -hmm. to have this creature still be there even if it's one or two or a handful of them it's like such a such a hopeful thing like it inspires hope across the planet. And I think that's why our show has been so successful and yeah. the work I do has been so successful because if there's 300 pandas left, and there aren't, there's much more, but my point is if there's 300 of a species left and you, you go and film it, great, but we know there's 300 of them, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's still fantastic that animal deserves tons of support and conservation efforts, but that's less romantic, I think, than the notion that this thing is gone. Right. There's none of them. Here it is, we found it. Wow. And so you said you – so uh, aside from the two we mentioned, you said about five. Can you mention the other of course. three yeah. that you found? Because I'm course. fascinated. Yeah, so we've got the Zan – the Zanzibar leopard was the first one that mm -hmm. I uncovered. Followed by that was the Fernandina – no, uh, yes. Yeah, I'm getting the order mixed up now. But anyway, Zanzibar leopard, Fernandina tortoise, the two that you've mentioned. One in Zanzibar, one in the Galapagos. We also found the Pondicherry shark. Or so we yeah. believe. Um, or so you believe. Well, what I mean by that is we're still getting genetic confirmation. I, I, oh. I didn't have the – every country has its own laws and rules, and we, of course, try to abide by those at all times. So we didn't – we weren't able to bring genetic material back to have tested, so that's still being tested in Sri Lanka, and it's Got a slow it. process. Oh, that being said, so we – but everything's pointing to that it's a Pondicherry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. it, it looks like it. It matches the description. The teeth line up, you know, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, Zanzibar leopard, Fernandina tortoise, Pondicherry shark – then in the last three months or two months, what's come out uh, publicly is we also uncovered footage of the Miller's Grizzled Langer, a beautiful species of monkey known as the Dracula monkey that hadn't been seen since 2012. Ooh, good um, name. Yeah, yeah, they're super <laughs> cool. just perked up. Can once. we look that up, Christian or Alex? I want to see a photo of that. Uh, they, they're called the Dracula monkey because they have this amazing like collar of fur, this white collar. Um, super cool animal. So we, we got footage of them first time since 2012. Wow. And... Um, uh, and then the Rio Apoporus caiman, which is a large species of crocodilian not seen since the 80s. Ooh. So um, it's been, yeah, it's Where been was amazing. That? The Colombian Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Man, and so is there just, like, what's the craziest place you've been to? <sighs> Jeez, because I, um, I can't imagine. I mean, we're, we 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 freak out when we just leave the office. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know Burbank's a jungle. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you gotta watch out. Um, Colombian Amazon. Oh yeah, look there. The, oh, the, it's so cute. The third one's the monkey. No, That's um, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, beautiful, Aww, beautiful animal. So uh, if you if you go to the picture, kind of middle bottom, right below me, that one. Yep. You can see the collar there. You see the white oh, collar yeah. where it gets the Dracula name from. It's so fluffy. Very fluffy. Very cool oh, animal. Very cool. Um, you know, but I, I kind of take all the credit for this. Like, I, I, I love what we do, and we're very good at exposing it. There's scientists we work with in the field. There's scientists that continue to manage the conservation of these mm -hmm. species. You know, I, like, I just want to say, like, we work with amazing people in the field who probably don't get highlighted as much as they should, you know. Yeah. Um, and just because I'm the hide and seek master doesn't mean they're not doing the most important work. So I just wanted to That's put that cool. out there. Or yeah. that you're, you're not by yourself, right? You need people with you to help. Yeah, you Yeah, there's all this, kinds of, of support yes. and all kinds of people managing, especially once we uncover the animals. Then it's like these teams of in-country biologists and scientists get to like we hand it over. It's like 
fix it. You know what I mean? Right. We found it. Like, this was the key. This was the missing piece of the puzzle. Now you have the resources to manage the conservation. It's no. interesting. Oh, uh, no, I wanted to know if just have you had, like, close calls where you thought maybe that this species was a part of an extinct line and it turned out not to be? I mean, it might seem like a stupid question, but I'm wondering, since you have these scientists and experts there, um, is there any kind of, like, you know, because I'm looking at the Dracula monkey and, right. and I don't looks it looks cool you know when you say it has the fur yeah and that classifies it is there like an animal that's close in species like no it's not that actually yeah well, all the time i mean misidentification happens yeah. all the time you know is some things like the shark for instance we were talking about you can visually you can barely tell it apart from other species of shark which is wondering. why the genetics are, ne are a necessity you know mm -hmm. other things are Animals are confusing, but um, <laughs> <laughs> other things like the Fernandina tortoise, right? It, it looks similar to many of the other Galapagos tortoise species, but it's the only one to occur on that island. Tortoises kind of swim, so there's no no other species could be on that island. Got it. You know right. what I mean? So there's there's misidentification cases all the time. There's things that I can't tell. We get stuff on trail cameras, and me as an expert, I look at it and go, I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got the butt of something that could be an extinct saula. Okay. It could be a, uh, a mountain goat. You know what I mean? It's a butt on a trail camera. Like, uh, <laughs> what do you want me to say? Like, I'm an expert, but I'm not a butt expert. Need yeah. more footage. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, these things, these things definitely happen, and it's all part of it. And, and it's fun because, like, in the show, um, you know, I'm a biologist by trade, mm -hmm. not a, not a TV host, not a TV presenter. I've never done anything in TV before, doing biology work on television. And it's fun because in the show, I think one thing that's very underrepresented in media is wildlife science mm -hmm. like yeah. we just don't get to see a lot of it like, like like we talked about at the beginning of the show this show you know there's anaconda and jaws and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and, and um that's not wildlife science that's just nonsense you know <laughs> like like Dwayne the rock johnson is a biologist like eh, i don't know about that you know <laughs> i'm thinking jumanji he's not. <laughs> right, right you know um and he's freaking amazing one of my favorite actors he's super fun to watch and i i love those kind of movies but you know that's still not – we do documentaries. Like, we really do. Like, our shows are follow me on this biological right. expedition and learn about science. Learn about tools like eDNA and trail cameras and thermal drones and all these fun tools that scientists get to use. And we get to show that to the world. I think people are really like, wow, this is how yeah. real wildlife science goes? Mm -hmm. This is really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, how can people, you know, help any of this? Like, like is, is there ways that our audience can uh, support – uh, these types of, uh, you know, the great things that you're trying to do with your team uh, other than watch your show? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I wasn't even going to say that, but um, <laughs> yeah, uh, there's lots of stuff people can do. And, and, you know, that depends what position you're in. You can do everything from, you know, choosing not to get a plastic straw or a plastic bag at the grocery store mm -hmm. to donating money to great organizations to volunteering at local wildlife rescues and shelters. I mean, there's so much to do. It's like, no matter where you are, no matter who you are, you can Google, like, how do I help? And there's a plethora of information that yeah. comes up right in your area, right mm -hmm. in your backyard. You don't have to put yourself out. Like I said, things like saying no to the plastic bag at the grocery store, that in itself makes a big difference, right? There, there's a great quote, I forget who said it, that it's not a matter of one person mm -hmm. doing sustainability or conservation perfectly. It's a matter of everybody doing it imperfectly that makes a big difference. Oh, yeah. that's great. I love that's a great that. quote. I have a very silly question, but Shoot. we can't bring up extinction and mosquitoes in one conversation and not have me ask you about this. Jurassic Park, go. Yes. <laughs> Is her favorite movie. Is there, How did you know? You is must there have known Perry's. Uh, any realistic <laughs> element to that whatsoever? Do you see a future, whether it's dinosaurs or not, where they can extract DNA from something, fill the gaps with another animal, and we could see a new species? 100%. Um, oh uh, my God, you just freaked her wait out. Wait a minute. No, it's. It, <laughs> you just got me. Oh uh, my God. Okay. No, so you, I don't know if you guys know this. Jurassic Park's actually a documentary. Uh, oh, yeah. I do. No. Like, wait, <laughs> wait, 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 like, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, no, but the. the there is zero doubt in my mind that in the foreseeable future, like our, ki our children's generation, uh, de-extinction, which is an actual term, will be a real thing. And cloning is already a real thing, right? It's not yeah. perfected. And it's very complicated, and I can, I can talk you through the genetics of how it will never be the exact animal that it was, if you'd like. But the point is, it's already possible. Like, mm. there, there are groups working on species like the passenger pigeon, which is a species we used to have in the billions here in North America that's extinct. Basically, to summarize it, you can pull some DNA out of, you know, fossilized or not, sorry, not fossilized, but museum specimens of passenger pigeon and collected ones and feathers and mm -hmm. uh, tissue and things like that. And you can 
for for simplistic sake, let's say, inject it into a very close living relative of a different pigeon, and through a little bit of tweaking, you get a passenger pigeon. So it's the the science is already there. There's a fantastic uh, TED talk called "The Dawn of Deextinction," by the oh, way, wow. that explains it far better than I just did. Yeah. Um, but it, it's a real thing. Yeah. It, so so long story short, in our future. You will absolutely, I believe, we will absolutely have the science and technology to de-extinct creatures. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm kind of... <laughs> we are I, all... My you, you, just, you, just made, you just freaked us out even more right it's now in, in, in a e- great way. But even to the sci-fi of it with dinosaurs in particular, could that be something? Like, I, dinosaurs. Uh, I, I just can't wrap my hand, head around that idea. I, 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 th- I believe so. I don't know exactly how the process goes, but, you know... 15 years ago, if you said, can you make meat in a lab, the answer was definitely not, right? Right. Today, you can you can buy meat made in a lab. What so, would be the species that uh, you found, I guess, that's the most ancient species that would would or is still alive today? Um, hmm, interesting. I mean, it depends how you how far you break it down. Like, there, there are species that have remained unchanged through evolutionary time for hundreds of millions of years. Mm. Coelacanth is 666 million years old. It's a oh fish God. that lives in the ocean, right? There are microorganisms far older than that that have remained unchanged since, as far as we can tell, the beginning of time for, the, for this planet. Um, that being said, like, what's something that's relatable? Uh, think of, like, crocodiles, right? Okay. Crocodiles are, like, perfect. And what I mean by that is they haven't changed in their evolution for hundreds of millions of years because they basically peaked. Yeah. And what I mean by peaked is, like, they change, they warp, they evolve to be this perfect predator in their environment. They can go long periods of time without food. They can sneak up on stuff. They can eat stuff. You know what I mean? They can reproduce easily. So they just haven't changed in a long time. Like, right. they've just remained the same animal that they've been for millions of years. I mean, they're, they're so cool. Why would yeah. they change? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> is there, uh, do you have, like, Moby Dick? Do you have your whale? That is there a particular species that you would <laughs> yeah. just love to encounter? There's lots. Um, and there's lots of, like, known species that are on my bucket list, but my Moby Dick, so to speak, um, is the thylacine, the Tasmanian tiger. So it's probably the most iconic animal that we've driven to extinction in the last couple hundred years. And there's it, it, it's it's earned like, and I'm not a cryptid guy, but it's earned like a Bigfoot status in the sense of like Ooh. there's constant reported sightings of wow. it. People believe it's there. There's there's people telling you I've seen it 100. Um, percent so that, those pictures on the left that you're seeing, those are the real animal. That's from the Hobart Zoo right before it died in captivity. Um, and then, yeah, you're seeing taxidermied specimens. So this is a, a thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger, marsupial wolf. This is a marsupial, a.k.a. a kangaroo, uh-huh. that looks like a dog. I was going to say. It has the like, jaws of a wolf, yeah. It looks like a Whoa. hyena a mixed with yeah. a zebra. Like, it's, it's fascinating. And, and what, when's the last time this animal was spotted? Well, spotted probably yesterday. You know what I mean? Okay. And, and in the sense of it's it's Bigfoot in its nature, in the sense okay. of like reported sightings come in weekly in Tasmania and Australia. Um, I personally believe that it's still out there in very small numbers in very isolated pockets. And I'll be I'll be planning on launching an expedition to a whole new region, Papua New Guinea, to look for this animal probably late twenty twenty, maybe mid twenty twenty. Um so still working on the details on that. But I, I believe it's out there and that's my great white whale. I've been on I've been on two Two very lengthy expeditions looking for this animal already, one in Tasmania, one in northern Australia. So I'm just going to keep moving north in its range. i got to pop one again next. Oh do my you God. have any pets? Or do, do <laughs> these animals take That's up incredible. most of your animal-loving heart? Um, I have 91 pets at home. 91? No way. Yeah. My wife did a math problem once. What? for. She's a school teacher for her students. So that includes, like, all the f- goldfish in the fish pond and, okay. like, things like that. But realistically, we have we have quite a lot of pets. So we live on an acre in Santa Barbara. Oh, and, nice. um, yeah, it's beautiful. Um, up in the hills. And we are, like, an unofficial rescue. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, like, that's great. Yeah, anybody that, that, you know, finds something that needs a home or is abandoned ends up at our house. And this was never the intention. Like, I, we love animals, duh. But, <laughs> um, you know, that, that we never wanted to, like, be a rescue facility or anything like that. Like, I travel eight months out of the year and yeah. blah, blah, blah. But we just... We started taking in things that needed a home, and it grew and grew and grew, and it's it's like a full time ordeal. <laughs> so is it like dogs, cats? Less horses? of those. It's um, less of those. I mean, we have we have three dogs, no cats. We have maybe fifteen or twenty turtles in the wow. pond. Uh, two giant sulcata tortoises, African spurred tortoises. Wow. Mini horse, mini donkey, two miniature pigs. One was a rescue from Hurricane Katrina. Oh. The other came from a family that got divorced, and then they both moved into like condos, so couldn't have a pig anymore from a ranch. Um, a bunch of peacocks, chickens, guinea fowl, turkeys. I mean, it's like, it's just a mess. It's a wow. zoo, basically. <laughs> well, you live in a zoo. Do you name them all? 
Uh, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> not really. Like, I, I, I'm such a nerd. I call all the turtles by their scientific names, like their Latin names. Um, donkey is donkey. The miniature horse is Felice, like donkey. Felice Navidad, because we got him on Christmas. Nice. Um, Buttons is the pig that was, had that name already because she was rescued from Hurricane Katrina. And Reagan is the other pig that we got, which also already had that name. So, like, you know, it's like a blend. That's great. <laughs> and it's not a mess. It's actually very organized and very fun. And, like, it is like a petting zoo. Like, we're constantly building and changing things around. But uh, it's a mess in the sense of we just we can't say no to an animal in need. It's I terrible. Understand. Well, Forrest, if, if you run out of room, my mother is taking animals in every single day. I thought you were going to so say we have... could put your mother in the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got a nice pen for her. I have, uh, yeah, What's she her might not name? like it, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, her species name is uh, Mrs. Riley, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I guess we have time for one more question for sure. us, unfortunately, as much as I would talk to you for hours I, yeah, because it's fascinating. So, uh, you know, you kind of fell into this world as a kid because you moved to Zimbabwe, you know, and that's where you grew up. Mm -hmm. uh, but if do you, do you think this is your calling? Do you think, what would you be doing if you weren't doing this? This. This, I, is, I am, your, this your is my calling. calling in life. This is what I meant to do. If I wasn't doing it for television, I'd just be doing it as a scientist. But it's more impactful, in my opinion, doing it for television because I reach so many people. I get hundreds of messages a day from kids saying, I'm gonna, I want to grow up and be a biologist. You know, And that's, that's to me, that's the, the greatest prize of all. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you want to catch his show, Forrest Galante is on Extinct or Alive on Animal Planet.